Hey what's going on guys Tanmay of Simple Snippets and welcome back to a new video tutorial on Java programming and today's topic is going to be on exception handling in Java programming so this is just the part 1 of exception handling and i decided to make a couple of videos on exception handling so probably there would be around 3 to 4 videos on this topic because it's a big topic and i won't be able to finish it in one video and then if i try to do that it would be a very long video and you will be bored so yeah this is just going to be a little bit of starters video so just theory in this video we are not going to be dealing into any program we'll just understand what exception handling in java is and the concept and the different types of exceptions the class hierarchy and it's a little bit different compared to what c++ exceptions are so basically since everything in java is objects so the way it works is different however the end goal or end motive of both c++ and java exception handling is the same is to deal with issues and exceptions that occur in the program issues like anomalous behavior and some error error oriented behavior to handle those kind of situations so yeah if you are coming from a c++ background it will be very easy to understand but there is a slight difference so if you are new on this channel if you are new on this topic make sure you just go through this video it's going to be very short just watch it watch it along and probably in the next video we'll go through the practical aspect of actually implementing the exception handling So yeah with that being said let's start off with today's topic you can go to this link i'll drop the link of our official website where this article is in the video description so you can directly go go to this article let me just zoom in so yeah starting off with exception handling in java which is the part 1 so as i mentioned just the theory let's understand what exception handling in java is so basically exception handling in java is a powerful mechanism to handle runtime errors so that the normal flow of the application can be maintained so what happens is sometimes we make some issues which are not detected at compile time in the program and when the program is running these issues and errors come up and your program exits without completing itself okay so in between only your program will hang or in between only your program will shut down and exit so that kind of situations we do not want when we are moving ahead in a live scenario right so if you have a live application which is running on a website or a software and if it suddenly crashes so that kind of scenarios are not really wanted in a live environment right so that would cause huge damage so that's where exception handling mechanism comes so what exactly is a exception so an exception is an unwanted or unexpected event which occurs during the execution of a program so this is at run time and this disrupts the normal flow of the program instructions essentially in java it is an object which is thrown at run time so as i mentioned earlier in java everything is objects right it's a object oriented programming language so it's whenever an exception occurs an object is thrown okay so now you know what an exception is it is an unexpected event an erroneous event an issue an anomalous event which happens at run time okay this does not happen at compile time so the compiler is not able to figure it out so if you make a syntax error usually your compiler gives you that error right at compile time itself and your netbeans id also detects it but in exception case this happens at run time so it's not detected by the compiler So what is exception handling now exception handling as i mentioned is a mechanism to handle runtime errors such as class not found so this is an exception io exception sql exception etc so it is a way to provide a proper structure okay so it provides a proper structure by giving us certain keywords and certain mechanism to handle these exceptions and this makes us safe from the application being crashing in between right so this helps to maintain the normal flow of the application so that's the main advantage is to maintain the normal flow of the application Now, since everything is objects, this object being thrown when an exception occurs is also has certain classes, right? So let's see the hierarchy of Java exception classes. So essentially, all objects come from the object class. So this is the super class that is at the very top level. Then we have throwable class which inherits properties from objects, and then we have the two different types of exceptions. So we have exceptions, and then we have errors also. So we'll talk about them in detail. Then under exceptions, we have checked and unchecked types exceptions. so there are different categories under both as well so we have io exception which is input output exception that happens during some file handling situations then we have sql exception which happens when we are dealing with databases then we have class not found exception when there is no class as the name suggest this kind of exception happens so it's so if it is unable to find any class this class not found exception happens then we have certain unchecked exceptions which are basically at run time so we'll just talk about them in detail in a minute so we have arithmetic exception like divide by 0 so if you are dividing a number by 0 that is something that gives infinity or not defined situation right so that's an arithmetic exception 
we have null pointer exception which you definitely will come across many times when we go ahead in this java development programming language we have index out of bound exception we'll come across that also and then we have certain errors which are basically not recoverable so errors are basically not recoverable when they happen the program by default exits and but and there's no actual way to actually avoid them we have stack overflow error virtual machine error so these are all system related issues if we don't have memory enough memory then we have out of memory error and so on so this is just the class hierarchy we'll just talk about the different types also in detail that is checked unchecked and errors so you can read out the theory which i just ex- explained all exception and error types are sub classes of throwable so they come from throwable they inherit properties from throwable and then ultimately throwable comes from object so one branch is headed by exception as i mentioned over here as you can see visually this class is used for exceptional conditions that user program should catch so null pointer is an example then another branch is error which are used by java runtime system so jvm handles it and it indicates errors having to do with runtime environment itself the entire environment itself so as i mentioned those are system errors and yeah there are basically three types checked unchecked and errors so we have checked unchecked and errors so checked exceptions are the classes that extend throwable class except the runtime exception class okay so checked exceptions do not inherit properties from the runtime exception and errors are known as checked exceptions that is io exception sql exception and these checked exceptions are checked at compile time so these are just some limited category of exceptions which are checked at compile time but most of them are unchecked exceptions that happen occasionally or more than the checked exception ones because once the program is running we do not know what we give input right so at that time unchecked exceptions happen more occasionally compared to checked exceptions then we have unchecked exceptions which are extending the runtime exception class and they are known as unchecked exceptions because they go unchecked during compile time right so they are checked at runtime for example null pointer exception array index out of bound exception and we'll see all these exceptions in practical also in upcoming videos so right now i'm just going through the theory then we have errors so error is a irrecoverable situation so errors are irrecoverable okay that's what i was saying once an error happens we are not able to go back if there is an exception we can always handle it but when an er- error happens it's a system level error and we are not able to handle that for example out of memory if your jvm memory itself is low and you are running a heavy program you might get an out of memory error then we have virtual machine jvm related error assertion error and so on so let's see some common scenarios of exceptions so i already have them listed so number 1 is where arithmetic exception occurs so arithmetic exception is a runtime exception so let's say I, as i mentioned you're trying to divide a number by 0 so you can see a is equal to 50 by 0 so this will give you an arithmetic exception let's see an example of null pointer exception if you are creating a string and you are saying s equals to null so you can always assign null to an object okay and when you are trying to print that that is the length of the string you will get a null pointer exception because s is currently this reference variable is currently pointing to null so since s is an object it's a reference variable right s is a reference variable so it's pointing to null and that's why you get an error of null pointer exception you will definitely go through null pointer exception a lot in for the java development process okay scenarios where number format exception occurs so if i say string s equals to abc and then i'm trying to convert it to integer by saying integer dot parse int i'm going to get a number format exception so scenarios where array index out of bounds exception happens so this happens only when we are dealing with arrays and array manipulations and also this also happens a lot of times so let's say your array is of size 5 okay and you are trying to access the 10th location but your array is of size 5 right so it will have from 0 to 4 locations only correct so how can you like access the 10th location when you don't even have it so this is where array index out of bounds exception occurs so the name itself gives it away right array index out of bounds so these are the four basic situations there are many other scenarios where exceptions occur but these are the most common ones and lastly i would like to say that the exception handling mechanism keywords are five in java so we have five keywords in java exception handling there is try catch finally through and throughs so this was just a theoretical video and just a representation of how exception handling looks like in java programming we'll go through each keyword in the upcoming videos so probably in next video we'll talk about try catch and finally and then we'll deal with through and throughs so two or three videos more would be coming on exception handling which will deal with both practical and theory part so i hope you understood this small video on exception handling and the concept of exception handling you can read this article out if you are preparing your answers i'm pretty sure this diagram will help you a lot and there are certain 
important points like the type of exceptions, checked exceptions, unchecked errors and some common scenarios. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood this concept. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel guys, make sure you subscribe so that you get notified whenever I upload a next video on this channel and I upload a lot of tutorial videos. Thanks for watching guys. I'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial. Peace.